This video is going to be going over the assembly of one of these motor housings that will be used in the <coughs> rearation chambers. And so to do this, we're going to some of the materials that we will need are the following. Okay, so we we will need two sides for the motor housing. Some triangular pieces that will um, be placed here on this little angled hood to direct some of the current. <clears throat> this piece that will serve as the, the main part of this little angled hood on the motor housing. And notice there are two, uh, each side has a 45 degree angle cut along it. One of these pieces that will hold our PVC <coughs> tubing that will help to redirect some of the water current along the bottom of the chamber. And then this piece of PVC has been pre-drilled and tapped to accept um, 440 screws. We will also be needing a top piece for the motor housing. <coughs> A little <clears throat> um, cylinder which will serve as one of the ports for adding gases or dye to the chamber. Another cylinder with pre-drilled and tapped holes that will <clears throat> um, allow us to adjust the motor shafting as we assemble the motor unit and such. And lastly just a piece that will serve as the port for a dissolved oxygen meter. Um, and in addition to all that, we will be <clears throat> using some acrylic cement, which I have here, and a little squirt bottle, as well as some pieces that will be the same width as this piece and just kind of serve as a brace during some of the gluing procedures. Um, can also use some turnbuckles for this step as well. Uh, those will also work if you don't have any extra pieces of these around. We'll be needing some clasps for the <clears throat> hardware once we have completed the, the box as well as some foam stripping, which we have cut to a centimeter in width to help make that seam between the motor housing and the actual rearation chamber watertight. You need one large clamp, a um, a completed chamber which we just use to help line things up, as well as some block washers and half inch 440 screws. So the first step is to adhere one of the pieces that will be holding the PVC piping to the side, which I have pre-marked at three and three quarter inches. And just a side note, all the measurements for these materials and where they line up can be found in the blueprints. And so we'll just begin by lining up this piece at three and three quarter inches and then applying the acrylic cement. Double check the measurements real quick. <clears throat> After this has had a minute or so to dry, we can go ahead and add the other side <clears throat> to it. And this is where it helps to have 
another one of these pieces that holds the PVC or a turnbuckle of the same width to um, <clears throat> just help give you some support and make sure that this angle is it's at a, as close to 90 degrees as we can get it. So once that's lined up, you can go ahead and add the cement. And then apply a clamp. <clears throat> and uh, allow this to dry for a few minutes, or about 10 to 15 minutes. While the cement's drying, we can go ahead and start working on the hood, which will help to direct some of the current. And so we'll just begin by getting this piece uh, that has the angles on the side. And two of these triangular pieces. And just set one of these triangular pieces up on the um, piece with the angles and we wanted these angles to be kind of going in facing upwards so that when we place these triangular pieces on here they line up so that yeah the angles kind of line up like so all right and then just add the glue and let that side sit for a while <clears throat> and then we'll do the same with the other side taking care that we make sure <clears throat> to line up I guess flush this triangular piece up on the same side as we did with the last triangular piece and then add the glue sit it's been about 15 minutes and the cement here has dried so we can go on and proceed with the next step which would be to add um, <clears throat> this little hood to our motor housing and so to do this we'll just take one of our completed chambers with the shelving in place. We'll slide our motor housing in and then add this hood so it's just off the bottom allowing enough room to slide the shelving unit in and out. And from there we can go ahead and add a little bit of the cement just to start this seam. I'm going to supply a little bit of pressure and allow this to dry before going on and, and really getting this seam glued really nicely. So now that we have given that a little bit of time to set, we can go ahead and just finish up this seam.
Now that the glue has dried, we can go ahead and add um, our PVC piping. And so just actually slide that in there. And we'll get one half inch 440 screw and a number four lock washer. And then screw in that into the PVC pipe um, Now one thing to mention that I should have mentioned earlier but um, this spot with the two square notches cut into it is the back so make sure that um, this hood is pointing Whereas on the opposite side of the back, as well as the PVC piping is angled, so that's pushing water away from the back. Now that the PVC tubing has been added, the next step is to secure these um, corner braces onto the back of the motor housing. So we'll just flip it up on its side and uh, rest against the wall or chamber somewhere <clears throat> and apply some glue to the seam and we'll just install these one at a time we'll set that on there get it all lined up and apply a little bit of pressure We'll just let that dry for about 10 or 15 minutes before we can move on to the next step.